Hi and welcome. First time back at Walmart car camping. Um, I pulled in here to Louisa, Kentucky last night. As I said in the last video, it I traveled for quite a ways. I could not find a place to stop. My I left Natural Tunnel State Park. My destination was Pikeville, Kentucky, but I couldn't find anything there. Um, I found a gas station about six miles north of Pikeville, but they literally did not have any parking. They only had about five, maybe six spaces of designated parking, and it was full right next to the, uh, right up in front of the building. Anyway, um, there was some, I guess, there were truckers parked there as well. There was some, I guess, undesignated parking. A uh, an RV, an RV, a, a truck with a travel trailer behind it, really nice, super nice. A Puma, I want to say it's a Puma Express, but I'm not sure. Anyways, a travel trailer, uh, very nice. Sliding glass doors, it was super nice. But there really wasn't a place to park, so I didn't think it would be that difficult. So I I went about another 30 minutes down the road. I found another gas station, completely deserted, um, very dark where I would have had to have parked, well I couldn't park at the gas station, I had to park kind of in a parking lot next to it and it was really super dark, it was, well, it, there was, it was kind of, uh, it was combined. Anyway, um, very dark though and I just wasn't comfortable, I, I looking back I'm like, oh I should have just stayed, but anyway I kept driving, I didn't, too late now, I kept driving. Um, couple other places, completely deserted, I passed a few and they were I think they might have been uh, 24 hours, but they were completely deserted, very dark, no one there. Just wasn't um, really, wasn't really thrilled with that. And then I knew that there's a travel center here in Louisa, and I thought, okay, uh, that'll be my last stop. I got here to Louisa, and the travel stop is, or travel center, I believe, is closed, or at least. I mean, it was closed last night. Anyway, um, it used to be 24 hours. It doesn't appear that it was 24 hours now. Uh, I could be wrong, but it was completely, it was very dark. It was like pitch black. Uh, nobody parked there. There was one pickup truck with his headlights on, but not a place I would park. I mean, you know, it was just too dark. Too dark, too desolate. Um, you know, no one there. I, I went, no. So I came back up here to the Walmart. Um, now in front of the Walmart there, or next to the Walmart, there is a gas station. Again, completely deserted. I just, you know, by the, by this time I wasn't uh, really hip on chasing around and driving any further. I was getting tired. Um, I could have driven further, but I was getting pretty tired. And I decided that it was time to stop, so I just pulled in here to the Walmart at Louisa, Kentucky, and I've stayed here before, but that was back when it was 24 hours. I stayed at the Pikeville, Kentucky. In fact, I would have stayed at the Pikeville, Kentucky Walmart if if I hadn't have, you know, if I'd have been tired. I wasn't tired yet, and I had to go to the bathroom, and then I, you know, and I think there wasn't anything, oh, well... It says online that there are some 24-hour uh, gas stations in downtown Pikeville. Not interested in being in downtown. That's not too, um, that doesn't appeal to me. But anyway, so I just, I left, like I said, anyway, ended up here in Louisa. I decided that it was just, I wasn't going to go, I wasn't going to go any further. I, I just, I needed to stop. And it, by the time I... I ate my snack and watched an episode of Law and Order UK. It was three. It was three o'clock in the morning. So I was like, you know what? They're going to be open in like three hours. Now, normally, I would prefer to get get to sleep by midnight, uh, but I haven't been doing that when I'm traveling. A lot of times, I have not been getting uh, to to bed until like two o'clock in the morning. Sometimes later if I watch a movie and after I pull my videos together anyway and so last night it was so late last night I didn't pull my video together until this morning and of course I'm getting started a little late because I did la I did this morning what I would have done last night anyway it was all all okay this is a very small Walmart very tiny Anyway, this Walmart is small. I don't. I, I it's tiny. I don't want to say tiny, tiny, but it's not a big Walmart. 
It's one of the different Walmarts where the bathrooms are all located up front. Um, anyway, I then now I kind of remember why I never really like to stop at Walmart. Now, for for a long, long time, eventually. A few years ago, when I was traveling, I couldn't find anything else. It was 24 hours, and I did. I did start stopping at Walmart because there just wasn't the availability of truck stops to to pull into. There, there simply wasn't. I will say this: there wasn't much. There were there 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 definitely were, was enough enough people here in Walmart. Of course, the store itself's closed for business, but there were enough people here. Night crew. Um, night, probably night stocking, night cleaning. So there were enough people here, and a few people came in. There was a, 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 a semi here um, without his load. There was uh, a couple of people, not not really that much. It was mostly night crew, like one truck. Pikeville had a few more uh, tractor trailers um, in. Before I went to sleep, a tractor trailer came in at like three o'clock in the morning to do a delivery. Um, but overall, quiet. It was quiet. Um, one of the things I don't like is to pull into a gas station that's very dark. That is that is not appealing to me. I I do not I do not like it, and I prefer to be somewhere where there's more light. Now, some people have a really hard time with the light, and of course they you know they have to cover over their windows and do all that. And I prob probably should do the same thing. I know I've heard it helps to keep it, keep out heat, keep in uh, cool air, keep in warm air if it's cold. But uh, as a general rule, I don't do that. I never really have. Um, I have, in the, I mean, I've tried, I've tried it. But every single time I covered over my windows, maybe it was the places I was traveling, I would consistently get that peck on the window by law enforcement, you know, wanting to know what I was doing, you know, was I okay, you know, where was I coming from, where was I headed to, you know, what's my story, you know, it, and it consistently happened enough times that, that I, I stopped doing it. Now, I, I don't know about now, I mean, that was, you know, a little bit ago, a few, you know, a few years ago, but after enough times of being, you know, stopped or woken up in the middle of the night with police wanting to know, you know, ask, ask me a bunch of questions, I, I decided that it was, um, just maybe not, um, you know, I just decided not to do it. I didn't like get, getting woken up. And I know one time when I was in Florida, they, the police officer told me, yeah, this is an attractant. He said, you know, your window's being covered. He said, that's an attractant to the police. You know, we can't see in, we don't know what's going on, you know, we think there's suspicious activity going on, you know. So, uh, that's one reason I just stopped doing it. I stopped covering my windows and just figured, you know, now, of course, you know, the whole reason for covering the windows is to keep other people from spying in. It's not really the police. I mean, you know, it's not a, a big deal. If the police are going to peck on your window, they're going to peck on it whether they're covered or not. Now, I do know from past experience that on one occasion, I was in the car, I was awake, I was just eating a snack, and I noticed the cop kept, you know, uh, looking, looking over, looking over, looking, kept looking, you know, and it was weird, and finally I thought, okay, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm getting tired of it, so I thought, well, I'm where I'm sleeping anyway, so, and it was at Walmart, and I just put my seat back and, you know, put my seat back and proceeded to, you know, try to go to sleep. Now, I know that before he left, because I could hear him, I didn't look, but I could hear him go and he, driving around my vehicle. He drove around my vehicle. He was, you know, he didn't shine a light in or anything, but he drove around my vehicle and I don't think he got out, but he was dry, drove around the vehicle and he was trying to peer in, you know, he was looking inside to, you know, see, you know, what was going on and by this point I had already put my head back I was you know and I didn't really move I was just at this point I knew he was there but I just kind of uh, just like you know just had my seat back and kind of you know like I and pretended like I, I knew I wasn't asleep but just pretended that I was and after a few moments of him I guess trying to see what he could see and think and, and thinking I was asleep he left 
and but first he wanted to be able to see in and see what was going on and when he saw that I was sleeping or going to sleep whatever he left so I now that's not always the case but but it's usually my experience with Walmart was I've never ever been bothered in a Walmart ever I think maybe twice and both times or three times not by police twice by police I mean actually let me rephrase once by the police in a in a Walmart in Ohio and another time I was bothered by a manager in an Ohio Walmart and Van Wert, Ohio, if I remember correctly, and the other time was by early in the morning by a manager in Midland, Michigan. So Michigan and Ohio, I guess, kind of uh, my experience with that was they kind of frown a little more on sleeping in cars. But they don't. I don't think there's. I don't even know. I don't think there's a law against it. Maybe there is. I don't know. But they, it, the managers don't like it. Anyway, I've ne but I've never had an issue anywhere else. And, you know, I'll stay for a little while and then I'll leave. And that, that was my, with Walmart, that was my experience before. You know, sometimes I would find a town and I would stay in it for two, three weeks. Sometimes four weeks. Sometimes longer. But usually about three weeks was my my cutoff point. And that, you know, in that way I wasn't uh, putting in a whole lot. Of, I wasn't, like, driving every single day and putting in fuel, like, every other day. I, you know, obviously I, I didn't want to do that. I couldn't do that. Plus, I had to work, you know, I mean, all my work, most of my work is on online, but, and, and this was before I was doing a lot of uh, property, uh, you know, consultant for my, uh, uh, you know, property consultant and property, you know, uh, in property investment. And I was, but not as much. And so most of my work was online and I had to stop, you know, I had to be, you know, working on my computer. And a lot of times back then, before the pandemic, I would go to McDonald's or the libraries and I would work, you know, all day. And, and I wasn't really using a lot of fuel. And that was good. That was good. I was saving money. You know, what I, I, I budgeted myself for the month. I have a budget that I stick, I stay under. I try to stay under. And my, now my budget, which is my fuel, food, travel, clothing, extras, uh, personal products, whatever I need. That is not, that does not include my, um, my, uh, bills and that kind of thing, but, but I am able to save, I am pretty well able to stay under budget, um, and I uh, do, do, you know, cause I, I keep, I keep one account where it's basically that a savings account basically comes out, you know, that's where I pay my bills. And some of the money goes in there every month, and the bulk of my money, I, the bulk of my, what I save from my spending money, car fuel, you know, food fuel, that kind of thing, I put into a savings account for a car fund, uh, either to buy another car if I have to, car repairs, that kind of thing. In fact, I just shelled out $813, and that was when I started having some of the issues with the transmission, and... I took the car in, turns out, I don't know, I don't know, but I got got all the maintenance done, and I did what they recommended, which was to start with a transmission flush, drop the uh, pan, clean the transmission filter. Um, I, I luckily have not had too many more issues, I haven't had any more issues once, once it changed kind of hard, and I, I don't know if it's a fluky transmission or what's going on. I had another, I had a Ford a, a few years back, and it had a very fluky transmission, slippy transmission, slipped almost, slipped every, you know, every day, every other day, every few days, slipped a lot, all the time, and I bought the car at 80,000 miles, uh, traded it in at 250,000, the transmission never did take a crap, so I don't know, I'm hoping that whatever this is, it's just a little, you know, just a little fluky. I know that uh, the first Ford I had, it, um, well, not the first Ford, but, well, it was one of the first ones. Uh, I did the uh, transmission flush and the coolant, I mean, not coolant, I did, but the fuel system cleaning, and that helped. But I turned around and did it again at about 20,000, 30,000 miles, and that helped a lot more because I think whoever had it prior didn't do any of the maintenance. Anyway, I'm going to wrap this video up. This video was strictly about um, uh, car camping at Walmart. Um, first time in a year and a half. Um, just wanted to, you know, talk about that a little bit. Um, talk about Walmart. Obviously, not as many people come into Walmart and uh, uh, 
park you know like rvs vans that kind of thing truckers not as many are doing it now that walmart's no longer 24 hours um obviously if you're gonna car camp at or boondock whatever you want to call it at walmart you most definitely have to uh, find a bathroom before you uh, come into Walmart, and hopefully you don't have to go again until 6 a.m. Now, that's not really an issue for me. I usually go late about midnight, um, 11. I usually go about 11 o'clock. My last time of going to the bathroom, sometime 10, 10 o'clock, 10, 11. And I, I definitely don't, I don't have to go to the bathroom again until the next day, uh, like, 12 hours later so it's perfectly fine for me as long as I don't get an upset stomach now sometimes I do get upset stomachs and when I do those are those are those can be problematic I've had it happen at a few times at a truck stop and that is oh that is just not good but and that is one reason I prefer to have a 24-hour gas station truck stop that way real super easy access to the bathroom should I have any problems but luckily most of the time uh, sometimes I do but luckily most of the time I don't and I guess the other thing would be if you're gonna be at a Walmart um, fair being fairly close to another to a 24-hour gas station is also important in this case there's a place called zip zone it's just right there next to kind of like in front of Walmart so it's just a really really uh, short drive it wouldn't you know if, if I'd have had to went to the bathroom it's like just a tiny little you know skipping a hop to, to drive down there to it could walk to it really but you know if I had upset stomach or something or I had to go to the bathroom real bad I wouldn't but you know real close um, so you know and for me like I said you know I could definitely definitely wait until 6 6 a.m. unless I had upset stomach but but I usually go about 12 hours anyway I just want to share that information uh, Obviously, um, if, if, if I stay at another Walmart, I can honestly say that Walmart definitely has to have, uh, it, they all have night stock people, so that's, that's fine, but I would prefer to have at least one or two trucks, you know, truckers or RVers or, or van life, you know, van people or whatever, um, travelers, whatever, park there as well, you know, I feel a little better. Uh, you know, staying at a Walmart, staying at some place that's closed, definitely that makes me feel better. And I also know that on this trip, uh, I am not sure where I'm headed next. Um, Ohio, Ohio, I think is going to be the next stop, but that's going to be another video. And I may end up staying at another Walmart. <laughs> and I'm not hip on that, but I may, may end up having to. So anyway, because... I'm on a U.S. highway, and a lot of these little U.S. highways, there, there is not, there is no close, close proximity to the interstate, no close proximity to uh, truck stops, and as I've learned on this trip on U.S. Highway 23, there are not any, uh, there's not very many viable 24-hour gas stations. Now, some areas have really, uh, you know, have a good selection of you know 24-hour gas stations like I said I stayed in one in Jonesboro Tennessee was fine I, there is a number of routes I travel to Tennessee that have the 24-hour Exxon's and they're they're fine um, so quite a few routes to Tennessee that do have 24-hour gas stations that are that are nice 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 places to stop but and busy but th this little trek from Virginia or, well, actually, you pick up US 23 right out of Kingsport, Tennessee, right on up to, I don't know how far it goes. Uh, it'll go all the way to Michigan, I know, but there's not a lot, not a lot of options. So, anyway, um, and the 24-hour gas stations are not great. So, I may end up at another Walmart. Anyway, um, I'm getting ready to get out of here. I just want to conclude this video. I'm not sure where I will end up, but wherever I end up, I'll do another video. God bless. Peace. See you guys in another video. God bless. Peace.